Hi guys. Today we are at the Urban Drive Styles workshop and we're going to take care of client's bike after the uh, first thousand kilometers that has been uh, ridden. So we're going to go through the absolute most essential parts of the bike. But first of all, it's the absolute most important part to clean it. So join me, come with me and we're having fun. We will start by watering it entirely. I will use a high pressure. Uh, I do not recommend it actually because it's electric and such, but if you have nothing other option, just make sure you take your distance, don't spray into the electrical components. Everything is wet. My preferred is the Simple Put Parade Reiniger 100. So spray it all over the place, and we take a neat polyester drag. Make it a little bit wet, and then we go over the bike. Smudge it in properly. And of course, always start from top because shit runs down. <laughs> yeah, so the reason to why we clean the bike is because it's 100% easier to see if there is anything that is in need of extra inspection or extra lab or control, so to say. And also you do increase the lifespan of every item that you clean. And you don't really need to worry about the uh, connections to the lights and such due to the fact that the uh, the Higo plugs are very well apt for the waterproofing. So first off we will start by taking care of the uh, derailleur's alignment towards uh, the sprocket. Um, so we start by simply <coughs> lift the rear wheel, by, uh, rear wheel and go through the gearings. And here we can instantly see that it is not going up, so we absolutely need to align it somehow. Let's go all the way up and then go down again, so we actually kind of see <coughs> what is necessary. Uh, the reason to why going down again is because you kind of feel where or how it needs to be moved. Now I know that it's easily moved downwards, so it needs to be either tensioned or loosened. Um, by just simply screwing the screw up here, inside of the gear shifter. Uh, <coughs> we screw it just a little bit outwards to increase the tension on the, on the wire. And it is literally just one or two clicks because it has a clicking system. Then we lift the rear wheel again and make sure to just feel if the first one pops in, easy peasy here. Then look at there, all of them goes to this proper position without any weird sounds or any bird chirping, so to say. Now, we actually just do need to lubricate some wheels, uh, the chain wheels, the small ones in the derailleur, due to the fact that it gives a really a little bit of a chirping sound. Uh, I prefer to use some simple spray on uh, lubrication, yeah? A spray inside of the we uh, wheels, the chain wheels, make sure that it actually ends up in in proper position in the middle of it all because you do need to get it into the gearing. Eh? And don't be scared, it's lubrication. The more you want, the more you want. Yeah, It's always good to have a little bit more. Use your ears and listen. Now actually we got rid of most of it, but it's always good to put a little bit extra. The most important part about lubrication is to clean off the uh, chain to get all of the dirt and then you need to wait because the water will be trapped inside of the chain if you uh, lubricate it instantly. How to do this is a fairly simple, pro simple process. What I choose to do is I put oil on top of the, uh, the cassette in the rear um, only due to the fact that when you move the chain it actually simmers into the chain's bottom inside. Yeah. So I take a little bit of the same oil and easily spray it. Not too much here because you don't want to waste. Yes. Now it's uh, back to the lubrication of the chain. What I find to be easiest is to use your own body, lean the bike towards you and then of course spray it inside so you get it to go all over the chain. And don't overuse because we need to care about our Mother Earth as much as possible. 
So next step would be to uh, take care of the tires, the air pressure in the tire, and it would be the uh, when you need to switch it out, basically when it's safe to ride. Every kind of uh, tire has its own uh, maximum pressure, so it depends on what kind of tire you have. Most often, you do have an indication here that gives the uh, proper bar PSI that you need. This one goes from 0.4 to 2.1, so it all depends on your own weight or and your riding style. I, myself, prefer, prefer to have it a little bit harder in the front and a little bit softer in the back. We unscrew the with that. And of course, I do understand that you might not have all of the tools that we are using, but it doesn't really matter. Everything is usable as long as you actually have a bar pressure. Um, I will pump this one up to about 1.7, 1.8 bar. And since we do have a pressure bar measurement, uh, we will just place it inside and have a look. And it is quite very low in here. It is just below one bar. So of course we'll pump it up quite a lot. There we go. There is my 1.7 bars pressure point. This is my preferred point, I have to say this. Um, the V tires, for example, be very careful when you pump those up because they are not meant to have more than 1.4 bars. It is extremely important for the longevity of the life of them. Be careful. One more thing when we still are standing down here. If you feel like it, the bike is a little bit wobbly or anything like in this regard, then you should just make sure that this line is evenly distributed all around it. And here it is, so it's all good. It is a very nice distribution. It's quite easy to see if there is unevenness due to the line here. Also, we should take a look at the tracks. Uh, these tires are quite all right. They have gone for just above 1000 kilometers, so there shouldn't be any problems with them. But nonetheless, when you do feel like the traction is starting to slipper, then you do need to switch them out. But most often, you just need to have a look at the, <coughs> the points in it. You have a small line in the middle. As if this one still is there, then most often the tire is quite all right. If you have problems, then check the pressure of the tire. We're gonna go through the screws here now, or rather the most essential screws, which the ones that usually just uh, vibrates loose a little bit, yeah? Um, we should be starting by the most obvious thing. The side stand is loose and it is a very straightforward and simple thing. All you need to do is take a number five inbus, tighten it a little bit. Um, I would also say that if, if you have a little bit of Loctite, then that would be quite awesome. Because Loctite is your friend as a mechanic, huh? Of course, we're gonna tighten the screws of the crank arm and the pedal. It doesn't happen very often that they, uh, they get loose, but it can happen and yeah, in later parts of the bike's life, this can be a crucial part to destroy. To tighten the pedal arm, either you use a number 15 uh, wrench or you use a, a number six inbus. My preferred tool is always the inbus. So we start by the number six, and then on the back side of the pedal, you can just place it. If you have the pedal in front, lift up the entire thing and give it some pressure, yeah? Just lift it up so you have it straight, and then the uh, <coughs> pedal should be tightened in this regard. So you go straight forward, tighten it to the point where you actually can't move it again. Take both sides and make sure that you actually put all of your force into it. And then we take the number eight, Imbus, and check these ones. And it's a simple screw, so it is in the normal manner. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Oh, that one was loose. What I find to be the most important crucial parts are the pedal arms, the torque, and uh, the head tubes fitting and of course the handlebars it's a rare thing that they actually go loose but you do need to check them too vibrations make screws loose also make sure that you make sure that the uh, rear wheel and front wheel nuts are secure uh, just simply put the wrench number 18 put a little bit of pressure here and this is harder than rock so i'm gonna leave that as it is don't forget that you have them on both sides with is the headset uh, tightness. So what we will do is simply hold the front brake and rock the bike back and forward alongside with your hand on the head tube. This will make 
either a glitching or a stiff uh, stiffness. If it is glitching back and forth, you will feel it extremely fast. Basically, what you need is a inbus for the uh, inbus number eight for the top screw, and then for underneath you need a wrench number 32. You take the number 32 wrench and place it underneath, and make sure that you actually hold on to the uh, bottom tubing. And it's the, the number eight inbus, and it's just to tighten until to the point of non-glitching. You can feel when it actually get, do get stuck. With a little bit of scratches or damage to the paint, and if it actually goes down to the frame, I would recommend to top it off a little bit. The roll code for our bike in the black is 9005. Get, uh, get in contact with one of your local dealers for for paints and give them the number of the roll, and then they should be able to actually find out and mix it properly. It is simple as so I'll get the brush out, get some kind of yeah, just cover it up a little bit. And since today, I feel like I'm Picasso or Van Gogh, maybe. You just pay a little bit of attention and cover it up. And then I have this small microfiber kind of fabric that I prefer to use. And I just dot on top of it to make it spread out to uh, simmer into the actual ground paint that is already there and then leave it to dry. Uh, that was it for this video. Now the bike is uh, up to date and safe to ride. It is absolutely in a beautiful condition. Uh, please do follow these uh, small and simple steps in your home and it, the bike should be living for a much much longer period of time and without these smaller unnecessary problems. Uh, it is still a bicycle, remember this, just because it's electrics inside doesn't mean that you cannot take care of it. Um, if you feel unsure about things, please take it to a, uh, a mechanic, a bicycle mechanic, any bicycle mechanic will do. Um, yeah, all I need to do now is to take it for a little bit of a test spin and yeah. I thank you for, today, for this evening, take care, until next time.